Hello and welcome to Guile and Friends, the podcast where you hang out with game devs and hear about our pixelated shenanigans. So many shenanigans. I'm your host. I'm also the founder and CEO of Guile Games, Chris Bergman. Uh, with me, as always, is my co-host and senior producer at Guile, Kim Edwards. Kim, how's it going? It's going great. I had to hold all my giggles in. You did what? a wonderful job. Yeah, we had to switch up roles a little bit due to energy issues. I don't know why. I don't know why you think you're more energetic than I am. I'm, I'm great. Drew, was I more energetic than she's been? Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Kim. See? It's, it's whatever. Got him. <laughs> we have a great guest today. We have my wonderful friend, Glenn Platt. Glenn. He's my friend too, by the way. What? Is he? Yeah. Uh, why, yeah. why are you stealing all my friends? It's fine. Keep going. Glenn Platt is the C. Michael Armstrong Professor of Emerging Technology at Miami University. After receiving his undergraduate degree from the University of Florida and his master's and PhD from Carnegie Mellon, he joined Miami University of Oxford, Ohio, where he founded the Department of Emerging Technology in Business and Design. He also led the creation. There's a, you got some hot shit. We're going to get mm -hmm. through this with all of this. He also led the creation of the nationally ranked game design program, the first Division I varsity esports program, Miami's Bay Area Entrepreneurship Internship Program, and graduate programs in tech entrepreneurship as well as esports management. Miami has been ranked the number one university for esports in the country. Glenn regularly also consults with Fortune 500 companies about games and business, and he's presently writing a book about actionable, gamific actionable gamification for businesses and is the co-founder of Lyceum AI, an ed tech AI solution for classroom use. Welcome, Glenn. Thanks for having me here, guys. How you doing, man? <clears throat> I'm pretty excited about this, I gotta be honest. Yeah. You know, I've seen sort of the curtains, I've wondered what goes on in here, and I'm glad to spend some time with my friends. The uh, Our landlords think we're filming porn. They do. Yeah. Well, not off the it table. Could, yeah, it's, you could, I suppose, here. <laughs> <laughs> Your background's nuts, man. Yeah. I, I, I forget. Because we're homies, I forget how accomplished you are. Uh, just you live long enough, so it's yeah. all good. But I know I feel sort of guilty now that you had to like chime in as being my friend, because Chris Thank and I you. have you know those little hearts, you know, where he has half a heart necklace and True. I have the other you have half. The, the best friends, but, I was like, yeah, yeah, best friends yeah. yeah. Best. that's Aww. what we do. Who yeah. gave each other the necklaces? Yeah, well, we're neighbors, which makes us better friends. That's. Yeah. I live down the street. That doesn't count. It's practically another zip code. Yeah. Yeah. What? Seriously. So our first segment of the podcast is called Shenanigans. What shenanigans have you been getting into lately, Glenn? So last week I had a double root canal. Those are some shen shenanigans. <laughs> right. And I got, I didn't get really good painkillers either. It was like Tylenol. Oh, and what? They wouldn't give you like Vicodin or whatever? No. No. Why? So that was kind of a drag. Are you serious? I don't know. That's weird. Opioid that sounds painful. problems. I don't know. So Kim's got a stash that yeah, you can borrow from. Yeah, I do. I wish I knew that. Yeah. And then we were talking about shenanigans earlier. It's I'm always trying to do my CrossFit shenanigans. Yeah. Nice. That's how has that's that how experience been? I injured myself. I did. They had a workout the other day called Death by Burpees. Burpees are the worst. They're burpees horrible are things. the worst. Yeah. So they're just nobody should do those. So I did a bunch of burpees. That's kind of it. That's the excitement. Oh, esports wise, actually, this morning, shenanigans wise, I met with some folks of Butler County tourism people, and they want to do a big esports event up in Butler County. No kidding. Kind of thing for all the universities and maybe a combine for high schools for recruiting. And Dude, that we'd kind of love thing. to figure out how to be a part of that. Yeah, that'd it's, be cool. It should be fun. Yeah. Do they have like an arena or something or like a place to do they're it? Gonna, they're going to, they're going to, they were looking at like Liberty Center and then bring in a third party to just bring in. All this stuff. Everything, like just a turnkey yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Which would be cool. Dude, that's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. What shenanigans have you been up to? Shenanigans. What shenanigans have I? I got to look at my notes. That's what I'm saying. He has to write everything down. I know. He's not, what? not well prepared. No. <laughs> I have it all written down. What are you talking about? <laughs> we got it in here. Yeah. It's like a steel trap. I was, he was like, your shenanigans aren't that. And I was like, I just need bullet points. Like, he's writing everything Can't down. Can't posting's hard. Sorry. I don't know if you knew this or not. Yeah, I got fired from it. So yeah, I know. It's fine. <laughs> My shenanigans spent all weekend. I had two like solid Saturday and Sunday game sessions with my two kids and we played Helldivers 2. And it is real good. Yeah. It is very fun. We'll get into, well, I mean, so it's, uh, for those that don't know, Helldivers 2 is um, 
pretty much like starship troopers but the game you like run around fight bugs it's super campy you do it for democracy it's great man. <laughs> it's great the kids love it i mean they love murdering bugs it's m rated so like it's one of the few m rated games we'll let them play we had a blast. We just sat in my living room. For all violence? Three of us. Just for, yeah, for violence and, and blood and yeah, yeah a little bit of gore. Yeah, yeah. yeah, there's no human. I don't think there's any human <clears throat> violence, really. Human on human violence. But they play Call of Duty also. So what am I saying? But yeah, yeah. it's violent. Did that. Having dinner. I Why I have a hard stop today mm -hmm. is I'm having dinner right after this with Jake Parmley, who's a, a senior producer at Insomniac. Nice. Weird flex. Yeah. He is, th it, this could also be called Chris's name drop corner. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Who are you having dinner with, Kim? Uh, my husband. I know, right? That's a good name drop. He's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Those are. I'm still in my shenanigans. Damn Sorry. It. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm playing golf with Wes Kellner tomorrow, who's a CEO. Oh, another guy. name drop. <laughs> yeah. They made Texas Chainsaw Massacre. You should have a little counter, like a little digital counter that you could put behind him. And every time he name drops, like a little. Glenn, you're one of my name drops. <laughs> yeah. There you go, Glenn. Yeah. Gonna, Done. Goes forward. Three. All right. Yeah. Anyway, those are my shenanigans. Glenn, can you be here every time? Because this is great. <laughs> this is what I need in my life. I love this. This is what happens whenever I hang out with any, anybody with you. You, have, you. you and Nick do this to me all the time, yeah. too. Yeah. yeah. I just end up being the one that gets kicked on the whole conversation. This is going to be a great episode. Kim, what shenanigans have you been up to? I have to say, Glenn, I think you win on shenanigans, but I'll still go CrossFit? anyway. CrossFit? Yeah. The burpees? No, all of it. A root canal? The, uh, double two. Root canal? Double. Two. Same side of the jaw? <clears throat> Same side. Ooh. Yeah. Two right next to each other. Oof. When did the pain end? Like a week. It took a week. Jeez. A solid week. That is no fun. That is no fun. No. I'm sorry. I'm good now. Okay, that's good. Kim, what oh, shenanigans did you get Oh, my shenanigans. Into? Yeah. Over the weekend, I like to do sometimes, I guess I call them adventure dates with my husband. And I'll just say, do you want to go on an adventure today? And he'll be like, yeah. And we just go outside and we'll start walking because we live downtown and we kind of just go into places we've never been or just go into areas or talk to people and do stuff that we wouldn't normally do or haven't done. There was like a lot of downtown hotel bars that we've yeah. never been to because like why would you go to hotel bars if you're from down here, I guess, other than orchids. Like that bar is really nice. But anyway, so we just kind of went into places that we'd never gone and kind of just ran around the city Hotel bars hours. are legitimately the best. They're really bars. cool. They're really mm -hmm. cool. I don't know I'm why I don't go to more of them. Yeah. Yeah, I never think about doing that. I never think about doing that. So what was the favorite place of all the adventure um, stops? Um The Cincinnati and Bar, which happened to be closed at the time that we went, looked really cool. Like that setup, that layout was really pretty. <laughs> I give another name drop. <laughs> oh yes, Chris, go ahead. <laughs> the last time I was hanging out in the Cincinnati and Bar. Imagine Dragons was also drinking in the Are bar. you serious? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is cool. It gets multiple chichings on that because yeah. there's how many people in Imagine like Dragons? Yeah, they, yeah. that's no, like there's the like five or four or five or something. <laughs> yeah, it's I don't, know. Pretty I don't even know a song I think by so. theirs, but one of the waitresses was like freaking the fuck out yeah. and took your per picture or whatever. And then as soon as they, they were done taking a picture, they like bounced. They're like, nah. Yeah, I wouldn't want, yeah, especially if it's a server taking a picture because yeah, yeah, then yeah, you're yeah. like, yeah, I'm not safe at all. They're not going to protect me, which I get. Yep. But anyway. Way to take away from my shenanigans. Okay. But your shenanigans, <laughs> so you didn't go into the Cincinnati But you were with bar. your husband. Yeah, no. yeah. Yeah. yeah, but we also explored the hotel because they don't care. You could be a patron or whatever. So we ran around and just took pictures and did stuff. And you It's know. a great hotel. I like it's a stuff. great hotel. Yeah. Have you ever been in there? Haunted never... as shit. No, really? It's... Oh, yeah. oh, yeah. It's got like a plaque know. on it. It's like one of the oldest, like it's a historic hotel. It doesn't look like that. But it, it's beautiful. Nick and I were in there. I think we did a staycation or something and we're there one time and the faucet would just randomly turn on full blast. Are you serious? Yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. No. Well, I'll check it out. Yeah. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. I like the idea of a hotel bar bar crawl. <gasps> oh, that'd be oh my gosh. Yes. That. that would be really fun. That would be fun. So what was the best one that you did go into? I think we just landed in the Palms Orchid ho oh. Hotel, which we always Frequent. It's my old favorite part. The nut. Yes, the old Netherlands. Do they still do Plaza. that really good brunch there? They do, and they have brunch. really good bar food now. Huh? 
Yeah, because the cool. restaurant had closed, but now you can just welcome like, to sit local at the bar edition. Yeah, local. Sorry, All right. tangents. <laughs> my bad. Yeah, but it was fun. Okay. We tried. There was a few places that were closed that we couldn't get into. Noted for later. Oh, actually, sorry. The best part was the dog park in Washington Park, because it was full of puppies, and I probably was there for an hour petting puppies. You don't own a dog, correct? But you go to the dog park all the time. Yeah, because I don't have to take care of other people's dogs. I can just go there, get my pets in, and, you know. That feels not okay. Why? Like a creepy single guy going to the McDonald's ball pit kind of? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. 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 First of all, I asked the owner if it's okay to pet (laughs) their dog. But you don't own a dog. dog You shouldn't be in the dog park unless you own a dog. Says you. It's in my backyard. I'm going to go there all the time. It's one of the reasons I live here. Isn't it your front yard? Technically, Technically, it's my front yard. But who says it's in my front yard? I I say Philly Market's in my front yard. Oh, do you? Yeah. Oh, okay. My bad. It's in my front yard. Petting dogs is your shenanigans for the week. Yeah, and I'll do it again. (laughs) Is that a threat? Yes. Can we move on? Please. Good shenanigans. (laughs) Now it's time for game news. Where we review the news of the week. You guys excited? Uh, Borderlands trailer comes out, came out today, and you guys both watched it. Yeah. Yeah. Wait, it was today or yesterday? Today? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday is what I said. Yeah, it's fine. What do you think? What do you think? Wait. So synopsis. Let me get to the oh, provided yeah. synopsis of the Borderlands trailer, and then we will give our official reviews Please. of the trailer. Of a trailer. Okay. Eli Roth movie. He's a director. In the movie, Lilith, Kate Blanchett, an infamous outlaw with a mysterious past, reluctantly returns to her home planet of Pandora to find the missing daughter of the universe's most powerful SOB, Atlas. Ramirez. I don't know their first name. Lilith forms an alliance with an unexpected team. Roland, Kevin Hart, a former elite mercenary, now desperate for redemption. Tiny Tina, Greenblatt's her last name. I don't know her first name. A feral pre-team demolitionist, Krieg, Tina's muscle-bound rhetorically challenged protector, Tannis, which is Jamie Lee Curtis, the scientist with a tenuous grip on insanity, and Claptrap, which is Jack Black, a persistently wise-ass robot. These unlikely heroes must battle alien monsters and dangerous bandits to find and protect the missing girl who may hold the key to unimaginable unimaginable power. The fate of the universe could be in their hands, but they'll be fighting for something more. Each other. Aww. This is beautiful. Yeah. This... Big screen take was developed at Lionsgate and works off of a script from Chernobyl. That's hard to say. Chernobyl? Yeah. Screenwriter Craig Mazin. Eli Roth also produced along with Avi Arid through their Arid Productions banner. The movie is set to hit theaters on August 9th. So based on the video game, obviously, what would you guys think? Oh, me first? Yeah, please. I'm excited. First of all, I think that Kate Blanchett is a goddess, and I just right. adore her. So I'm super excited that she's one of the main characters. I also played that game, like, how long has it been? I don't Did know. Did you play it with your husband? Okay. Yeah. Because it, it seems like a game that only works well co-op. Yeah, I never played by myself. That's a good point. I probably wouldn't have picked it up had he not picked it up. But it was like, it's just like a fun game and I loved playing it and so the fact that it, it seems that it's going to be like a almost a summer blockbuster in my opinion yeah it looks good it just looks like good fun yeah, yeah. good fun yeah, yeah what's your take Glenn yeah well you know I had the, the exact same takeaway it was like Kate Blanchett like elevated everything else happening around her mm-hmm. you know like Jack Black and Kevin Hart it could go a lot of different ways not yeah good and like her presence, like around them, just made it feel a little better, right? And I always think these movie adaptions of games. I kind of go into the the trailers like with a, like a cringe expectation, like it's just going to be, mm-hmm. you know, like Dungeons and Dragons movie kind of stuff. You know, like, I heard that was really good. That though. was really good. You didn't oh, like tra- it? I did not like it. <gasps> I loved it. No, I did not. I loved did you watch it? it? And yeah, okay, yeah. It's interesting. I, I did not silly. like it. And the, but the trail the trailer I remember distinctly the trailer like seeing it in a theater and being like, oh no. What didn't you like? And, Wait, we're gonna we're gonna stay on this. Yeah. What didn't you like about the Dungeons and Dragon movie? I will admit I bounced off it, but I think I watched it at a weird time. For yeah, me. I mean, I don't even know if I did finish it. I just, I like, I just remember not being 
grabbed by it. Like I started it. And yeah. I just was like, uh, oh, this isn't going I, anywhere. Are you I'm kidding like, me? What did I, you like, love about I like watched the outtakes because I thought it was so silly and funny. Yeah, there's like, like spoiler if you haven't seen it. Like there's this one point where they like had to go into a graveyard and dig up like a dead person. They can only ask them like I think three questions. I can't remember what the rules are anymore. But like that. they. I did that in Baldur's Gate a lot, by the way. Oh, did you? Yeah. That's very cool. They were asking questions, not realizing those counted. And then they, and it was just like uh, those little silly moments. Those right. all added up. There was tons of moments like that. And I loved it. It was very well written. I will make this commitment here on screen. Yeah. I will watch it again. Okay. And give you like follow-up feedback. That sounds that. like a plan. I can't Love wait that. to hear that. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> so um, Borderlands. But anyway, no, I want to finish my point, oh. <clears throat> which is just the... Like, I expected it to be kind of cringy mm -hmm. and awkward. And I thought the trailer itself was really good. I mm -hmm. mean, like, it looked like the effects were good. You know, the jokes weren't corny. The characters were sort of what you thought they would be. Like, the visual style oh, yeah. they nailed. I thought they did a good yeah. job with that thus far. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Those are my thoughts. Love it. August 9th. Are you going to go yeah. see it in theaters or will you wait for it to stream? Will you go with me? <gasps> yeah, I'll go Aww. with you. That's sweet. All right. Yeah. I'll do it. It's a date. Let's go. Nice. I okay, still need see, somebody to go see Mean Girls the Musical. Mean Girls the Musical with me also. I don't. I, don't, man. I sound really naysayer. Or I don't like musicals <gasps> as a rule. Oh, That's my, my favorite kind the of movie. The idea of like people walking around and suddenly breaking into song. You and That's just how I want my yeah, life you and to be. It every sensibility oh, I have I about it. music and people. Ugh. Yeah. Don't. We're going to go that to hurts. a musical in yeah. the theater. No, I'm not going to. I'll go with you, but. Oh, did you see Craftworks coming? I think. Well, I saw them up in Detroit last year. Oh, yeah. Like, You've seen them enough? Well, yeah, they just stand in front of a laptop. What's that, wrong with that? I mean, that's fine. You just yeah. don't need to see it again. Yeah. You know, that's kind of it. Like, I don't even think. I've seen you with your laptop. You're doing something. I'm not even sure they're really doing something. Mm. Oh, interesting. That's a hot Fighting take. Fighting words. Chris, what did you think of Borderlands, the trailer? It looks goofy fun, like goofy fun, man. I mean, I think, I, you know, the one that I was worried about was Kevin Hart in particular. Same. Because Roland's a pretty straight man character. He's oh, not like goofy or it. really like talk back or whatever. And I thought Kevin Hart did a pretty good job. I, I have to. He, as a straight man. Yeah. I, I'm not a fan of Kevin Hart movies in general because he's always like the wild card person. From what I can get from the trailer, I do the way he's acting in yeah. this. And Jack Black sounded like Claptrap. Like it, he I did. mean, not exactly, but like it With, felt close. Yeah. I do kind of wish that they just cast the voice actors instead. I agree. Because like Tiny Tina's voice actors, she's on Mythic Quest. She's a you know, there's they're real actors, You're right? And so it's that huh, okay. right. They you know Claptrap and I don't know. Anyway, you should I do agree. a Guy Lee field trip to go to the movie. We do that sometimes. We haven't done it in a while. I've never <laughs> gone to the movies. With the with all of us? Yeah, that is we, correct. We've definitely all. I've never. Maybe it was like superhero movies or something. But yeah, we should. Maybe that that sounds like a guyly field trip for the movies. That's so Glenn doesn't have to go with you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm an honorary guyly I would say so. You definitely You are. are the first guest that is not officially on guyly payroll. That's true. Yeah. So you should so, feel honored. Yeah. Yeah, sort of. Artist in residence. Yeah, I yeah. I guess <laughs> in EIR. I'm yeah. gonna go with that. Other news. So this is a big one. I'm gonna try to not read as much because that just doesn't go well for anyone. It's a lot of words too. It's, yeah. So Hell Divers 2, which I've talked about, played it all weekend long. One of the big challenges of Hell Divers 2 this weekend was getting in. Servers were at capacity quite often, and uh, you know there were times it was so funny because Guy and I would keep our laptops open while well, he was they're both playing on playstation but keep our characters logged in just while we take five minutes to like use bathroom get food do whatever right and lee just because out of habit he would shut his playstation off and log out and so then it would take him like 25 30 minutes to get back in because because servers were at capacity and but one of the reasons for that we found out in gaming news is because hell's hell divers 2 was built on a dead engine <laughs> yeah Autodesk's engine Stingray was officially discontinued back in 2018, which is why they had such a hard time getting the game to capacity. And the Arrowhead CEO did say that when they started work on it, 
on Helldivers 2 that the engine was still alive and well. And it's worth noting that Arrowhead used Stingray to create the original Helldivers, so at least the team could lean on past experience to chart a path forward once Autodesk had declared that the engine was dead or whatever. And I think what's also interesting with that is Helldi- or the Arrowhead CEO mentioned, you know, people were like, well, why don't you just hire more people to engineer, you know, bigger servers, blah, 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 <laughs> blah, right? And he was quoted as saying, the act of overhiring to then do layoffs is a horrible practice and a bad experience for employees. He also added that if you add these people, so this is an engine that very few people have worked on, right? The engineers that are working on capacity issues would have to stop to onboard new engineers. So it just doesn't make sense to add people. I thought it was cool how he's been so transparent through this whole process, man. I I don't, what do you guys think? I I agree with you. I have very little knowledge other than what you were explaining to me when you were playing with your boys, but it does sound like he was super responsive, which I think is amazing. And also what a great problem to have because that means people want to play your game. So like the fact that he, it sounds like he does really care about his employees and he cares about his game. I really don't fault any of it. I still think that, you know, as far as problems go, it's still, A pretty great one because it means people want to keep playing your game. Yep. And that's, you know, that's classic, I think, like gold star PR management, right? When something goes wrong and you don't deflect it, Mm -hmm. you don't blame people, you own it. Take responsibility. You're transparent about why it happened, what you're going to do about it. And at the same time, you're saying something that is in support of your employees like these days in the game industry, that's all big, right? So I think it's a perfect way to deal with it. Yeah, man. I mean, I I like also that he took the time to explain his reasoning, why he's making these choices, not yeah. just that he's making these choices. Um, so I have somebody new to look up to as a game studio CEO. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Maybe you'll have a new friend someday too. Yeah. That'd be you fun. You could name drop him here. Yeah. There, <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. If if my name dropping annoys you, leave leave. No, we've just found a something. Leave a comment. Yeah, no, it's, it's sort of a theme now. Well, no, yeah, it's a running theme just all day. I do day. it all the time. Yeah, and I, here's why. Can I explain why? Oh, please. This is mostly for Glenn. Oh, I, okay. I know you're just gonna give me shit no matter what. <laughs> but it, I feel so privileged and grateful that, to, that these people want to spend any fucking time with me at all. It very much comes down to imposter syndrome. And I can't believe I get to to know these people. So the Imagine Dragons thing, that was... That was, no, that was just like <laughs> the last Damn. time I was in the Cincinnian. Just checking. Okay. God, just went for the jugular on that. Brutal. <clears throat> last bit of news. Neither of you will give a shit about this, but I am so excited. We finally know Project L's full name. So Project L is a 2D fighting game that Riot's been working on for five or six years now, I think. It looks gorgeous. I have not had a chance to play it yet, but I'm dying to play it. And they announced their the name for that game today, which is 2XKO. It is a 2v2 tag-based fighter. It was announced in 2019. I don't... The name? What do we think about the name? It's well, not a placeholder. Sorry, I stepped on you. No, and I saw it written. I thought it was one of those you're supposed to pronounce a certain way. You know, I, like, I don't think so. Like it's missing vowels and a <laughs> Tinder like fantastic, you know, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just well, saying. Hot it. take. I just, no, because two X. Yeah, it doesn't. Yeah, two, two X K O. Well, because it's two. It's ta- two V two. You gotta can yeah, you gotta knock them out twice. Yeah. yeah, I get the logic behind it. Yeah, I do too. And it's I don't. It's so hard. Like League of Legends, because these are all League of Legends characters that are in here. The champions on the roster so far: Ari, Echo, Jinx, Katarina, Ilawe. I don't know Yesuo and Darius, all super popular League characters. But it's hard to come up with a cool name, man. I think it's the consonant relationship there, like the X K. Like they don't. Yeah. They don't, they don't roll one well. after the other. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. just too many. It's no raw boom. It's no, no. raw boom, which we have not <coughs> mentioned once so oh, far. Shit. We forgot to do that at the start. <laughs> we'll do it at the end. Yeah. Anyway, I'm really excited about it. I will never play it. 
You will never play it. I will. I'm going to try to. There's a a play test, a public play test happening later this year. Mm. I'm going to do my absolute best to weasel my way into that play test because it's. I love fighting games. When's the release date? No release date announced yeah. yet, but I think the game's locked, and I think they're. This is hearsay. I think they're focusing now on tuning based on finding community feedback. Fighting games are hard to get right, man. Fighting game communities really nitpicky in a good way, and because it's it's all it's in the minutia that the game has found for a lot of those players, right? One frame of animation can make the difference between something that feels great and something that feels awful, which is yeah. like when we were doing raw. We're going to Rara Booms, our four player co op beat em up about Ninja Cheerleaders from Outer Space, coming soon to things. <laughs> I don't I think we've announced how you gonna end that? <laughs> We haven't announced anything yet. But when we were working on Rara, we actually brought in a guy who did combat work on Brawlhalla, which was a fighting game, to come in and, and be like, what frames work well here? You know, when should these be cancelable? When should, you know, when should they be? What's the word I want? Like, when should they be invincible frames, right? All that stuff. Because it was like, he had played it. We were hanging out at a GDC, maybe? GDC. And he played it. I had Rara on the Steam Deck. And, uh, you know, I handed it to him and he played it. And he didn't say anything there. We were just, like, hanging out. And then the next day, I got two pages of notes on combat. It was, was really like, thoughtful. Yeah, it was really, really good. Thoughtful. And then I was just like, can I just pay you to... Yeah make this better so i don't have to think about all these things because this is overwhelming and now the combat's really good yeah, in rara I because agree. of it yeah it, like even small things like the if like things that i would know like the hit box felt off or something like that where you just don't feel like you're getting that instant hit like he just picked up on that so quick and it was and those are easy fixes but things that you know you might not know yeah that's interesting yeah Anything yeah. really surprising? Did he recommend something that, that? It was just like magic, man. Yeah. Like after, no, you'd have to ask Denver because they were the ones that were in the weeds on it. But it was just magic. I think after, you know, we made those changes, like the game just felt so much better. It's crazy. It's very cool. Yeah. I'm not the expert there, which is why I hire experts. And then it went like How would you describe your role today and what you spend most of your time on? I think my job at Miami, I'm like an academic entrepreneur is what I think about myself doing. Like I'm the way entrepreneurs are sort of recognizing gaps and markets and trying to fill them. Mm -hmm. I'm kind of doing that for education. Like what, so I'm thinking about what universities ought to be thinking about. And I try to build interesting ways to kind of address those gaps. That's what I like doing. How did you discover that's that was motivating for you and fulfilling for you? <clears throat> Super accidentally, which I think it's important. Like I I talk a lot with students and they're like, I don't know what I want to do with my life and I have a plan. And you know, John Lennon famously said, right, life's what happens while you're making other plans. And like, there's a, the, the trick is to not just like be aware of serendipity, but be open to it. Like, because there are these things that sort of pass by you all the time. And 
I think a lot of people just don't notice them. And then other people, like, I think you're one of those people that's just, that notices it and then grabs it. And that's how I ended up doing this. Because I went to Carnegie Mellon, um, <clears throat> oh man, I'm going to uh, date myself here. But when I got to Miami, the internet was kind of a new thing. Sure. That's, oh yeah, that's dating right. yourself. Yeah. And we and should I, all date ourselves. Aw. <laughs> <laughs> <Aww. laughs> yeah. Hugs. And I had been using the internet at, at Carnegie Mellon because it was one of the original nodes on the ARPANET right on. in like yeah, the yeah, early yeah. days of the internet. And I didn't even know it was a big deal. And then I got to Miami and they were all like, hey, you know about the internet. Tell us about this. And I was like, okay, I'll do that. That sounds really interesting. And, you know, I had the first online class and the first e-commerce stuff that we taught in business school. And, and it was just super accidental, right? If I hadn't gone to Carnegie Mellon, if I hadn't been the tech guy in a weird default way. I mean, there was not intentionality to it. I think there's been very little intentionality in my life in that sense. I think the intentionality is just being open, right? To be intentionally open mm -hmm. and receptive and observant. So that's what I like doing. What's been like, so you started the games program. <clears throat> yep. You started the esports program. Yep. Bunch of other stuff. What's been the, what, what am I trying to say here? The thing that you've been most proud of that you've kicked off in education? I don't. What, what's been the most challenging? Yeah. I mean, it's hard to say most. Like all these things, they're like children, you know, and there's not like a favorite child there. Yeah. Like right now it would be the one that we're doing and we're fo focusing all our attention on now, which is we just moved into a new building and there's this two and a half million dollar XR stage. And yeah. we're doing like production level XR stuff. Like it's a big two story black box with, I mean, it's amazing. Like Mandalorian quality production. Is stage. it a volume? Yeah, yeah it's, it's the exact, it is the exact same technology. Right like on. It, it's, which, you know, yeah, so I'm, at the moment, that's what I'm most proud of because I think that's kind of where the jobs are. I think that's where, what our students ought to be doing, you know, and and at a time when I think there's just there's a ton of game programs out there. And I think the ethics of someone paying for a four year degree to get into an industry that has flat head count on a good day, mm -hmm. like is questionable. Mm -hmm. And so being able to kind of have career paths that are game adjacent like this, where you know, you're working with Unreal. You're, right. you're working with 3D models. I mean, everything about it is game development. Yeah. It's just not in a game. But there's a career in this, you mm -hmm. know, and we get students that are, you know, getting six-figure jobs out in L.A. straight out of college. Because they've had the time in the volume. Yeah, because they know how to do this. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah, yeah. They're working with, you know, Notch and Touch Designer and all this sort of specialized software for that kind of production. Right. So at the moment, that's what I'm super proud of. You know, back in the day, it was something else. It's <laughs> well, just whatever. What do you think, you know, in regards to you, you talking about sort of your own responsibility or how you take on responsibility in games education, what do you think is the responsibility of educators in that space, right? So if you're a student and you're like, I want to get into games. Everyone wants to get into games, right? I want right. to get into games. And there's multiple career paths. You, you can be a community manager. You can be a producer. You can be in marketing. You can, you know, you know like actually be an engineer or... You, you can be on the production side with art, et cetera. As you know, one of the educators in that space, when you get an 18 year old doughy eyed little kid, right? What are some of you, the responsibilities you think educators should have in regards to managing those dreams for that person? I think like step one, is to get that gamer to go from being a consumer to a producer and understanding the difference between those things, mm. right? It's like someone who likes driving cars and then learning how to fix cars and sell cars and make cars and working at a car company. And, you know, the 18 year old that comes in, they only know it from that consumption standpoint. And I think a good game program begins with saying, look, here's the whole ecosystem. These are all the different jobs and the people who get this done and what their roles are and what their skills are. And even though you think, you know, being in a game program means you, you're making video games in that very sort of literal, I made scratch video games when I was in high school, kind of making video games. People do jobs like Kim's job 
and they don't even know what yelling that job at is. People. Yeah. Wait, what did you call? What did he call me? He said yelling at people. He said oh. that's, that's your job. That's your that's job you yell is. at people. Oh. Like. I get no. First of all, that was beautifully said because like. I didn't think of it that way, but that's exactly like if you were my professor, then I would be set up for success because I would be coming in doe eyed thinking, I love playing video games. This is going to be so fun. And then you don't realize if you're in that profession, playing the game over and over again isn't as fun as you think it is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's just knowing that landscape and having respect for the people who play those different roles and then figuring out what you're good at. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, so. There are a lot of, and I'll push again on this sort of game adjacency because there's entire fields that kind of hover around video games that are related to the different skills. You know, and if you can do project management on a game, you can do project management at a software company and you can do project management anywhere, right? So that you just start to see the skills that are needed that you would want to build at a university should be sort of broadly applicable. And I try to be brutally honest. Like I am very down on the likelihood that a student is going to get a get job in the game industry. Mm-hmm. Being in the Midwest, in particular, you know, if you're not at you USC, create the opportunity. Man. Yep. You yep. know, it's a hard place. It's a hard place to do it, right? And so, you've really got to be committed to, you know, that dream and understand the role that you're going to play in it. So you also consult with giant corporations you know, as another sort of part of game adjacency, Mm -hmm. right? Has there any, has there been any learnings, you know, for people that maybe they might be at big corporations right now, right? Watching this podcast, probably at work, miserable as hell. (laughs) If you were me, (laughs) you were, you know, what could be opportunities that maybe they should be seeking out in regards to, you know, connecting with their, games expertise with being in a huge corporation? Well, I think for huge corporations, there's two ways you can come at games as capital G games. So one is to just recognize that everybody who's buying your product or your service was raised as a gamer. Mm -hmm. That's the language they speak, you know, we're destroying Hollywood, finally. <laughs> Things like, like, you just start paying attention. Like, I, I tell them to do this. Pay attention to how often you hear the phrase level up. It's just part of the vernacular. It's the way this generation was raised. And if you're not thinking about positioning what your company does for people who think in terms of the incentives that games create and how communities work in games and how you work in a team in games, like all of these things have become muscle memory for people now that have a shit ton of money and are, and want to, and are spending it. And if your company's not thinking about how to position what you do for gamers, then you're not positioning it for your customers, right? That's, I think, sort of point number one. <clears throat> and then point number two is just that in a world where everybody is cord cutters and using ad blockers and all this kind of traditional corporate marketing and corporate communication like d- doesn't land. Mm-hmm. And video games are the one place where eyeballs like are sticky for hours and hours at a time. Mm-hmm. And if you're not thinking about how your company fits into that world, that's kind of the only way you're going to get in front of this generation is, is with games. And you know, they got to break out of all the old stereotypes. There's there's a large corporation I worked with you know, that that began the conversation with this assumption that all gamers are, you know, sitting in their parents' basement eating <laughs> Cheetos and, you know, that sort of classic. Is it stereotype. the corporation? I think it is. And, and, you know, you just start like throwing them out the statistics. You know, the average gamer is, you know, a, a middle aged woman is actually statistically mm-hmm. is the average gamer. And, and sort of just having them recognize <laughs> that there, there's just lots of Kims out there. A lot of Kims playing, out there. Playing Candy Crush. <laughs> yep. <laughs> What level are you in Candy Crush? I am literally like at infinite levels. Like they have to, I'm waiting for them to create more levels. Just for you. Just for me. Nice. What was the last, do you know the number of the last level you played? It was like 5,960 something. Yeah. Wow. Like I'm not exaggerating. I said, 
<laughs> really? Dang. I did not know that about you. I said Candy Crush yeah, just yeah. as a somewhat joke, but no, I had no idea. It's, it's like, a, she's pretty serious, I don't but. know why. Oh, very. Wow. I look over often and see her playing Candy Crush. What? Yeah. You don't work. You don't act like you work. What's your casual go-to game? My casual go-to game? Hearthstone Battlegrounds right now, mm-hmm. which isn't particularly casual, but it's casual for me, for sure. Yeah, I love like, auto oh, chess God. games, and it's, yeah, I enjoy it very much. Do you have one? I've been obsessed with Connections, that New York Oh, yeah, yeah the New York game. Times one? Yeah. I've heard it's really good. Oh, I just yeah, played it I've yet. heard that one. It's, like, it's pattern recognition, which yeah. for me, that's like my sweet spot ignition. Yeah. Like, um, well, dude, so. I feel like we just skimmed the surface, so we're going to have you back, but we got to keep moving. All right. Are you going to be seeing anybody? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Kim! I got... Now we give recommendations oh. uh, for the audience oh, that I, is listening. Do you Kim, want me to go first? What recommendations do you have for mine's, the audience this week? Uh, mine's like an unrecommendation, I'd say. And this is what a positive way to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> I am so angry. I want to do my best to save people's time. And spoiler alert if it happens, but I'm going to try to do my best to, no, not, no, to not ruin it Yeah, for no spoilers. Mm-hmm. Okay. I recently finished uh, True Detective Season 4. Have you watched it, Glenn? I haven't. Okay. So Chris had finished it like a day or two before me. I watched the last episode the second it came out. Because it airs like Sunday night or At whatever. Like 9.30 or 10 o'clock. My husband's yeah. playing D&D, so we like to watch together. So weird flex. Oh, I can't interrupt. Anyway, you just <laughs> wanted to say weird flex, which is fine. <laughs> so anyway, I was like super excited. Really liked the way the pace of the show. Really liked the ties to other seasons. Really liked what they were doing. So freaking excited. There were so many loose ends. It was not explained in the matter that it should have been. And I literally turned to my husband at the end and I was like, did did we just watch the same thing? Did that end? Did I miss something? Do we need to rewatch it? I was so mad. I loved it and she's a liar. I'm trying not to give spoilers, but there was so many stupid. It's really good. It's really good. There's so many stupid stuff that they missed. So many stupid stuff. Where I brought up in an argument with you, Chris, and you could not defend it. You just I, loud I, allowed it to be the way it was. I'm there were so many happy with the d- creative decisions that they made at the end. And it felt tied up nicely in a bow. And it, like the whole season felt like a really well done package. I liked it a lot. I so he said this to me after we had our little uh, tisk and I thought, Oh, well maybe I am tisk. tisk? What do what do I I don't know. A little tiff. tiff, tiff, tiff. Tiff. Thank you. I think tiff tisk is, is, tisk, is tisk, yeah. Tisk. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. Tiff. And the next day, I went to Reddit, like one does, just to see what the the, the common the vibe. Yeah, and collectively, everyone is <coughs> angry at. That's Reddit. Tiff, Who's not angry on Reddit? That's that's true, but that's I mean that's like my go to feel, I feel like, like I'm the tiebreaker here. I'll have to watch yeah, it. yeah. Watch it. you yeah. really do need to watch. Have yeah, you watched other seasons? I haven't. Oh, okay. <clears throat> I remember you and I talked about this because you were you. We had a conversation about how I because I missed the first season. Oh, I started right, right. to watch it, and then you're yep. like, "Oh, skip season." You see, skip, skip season two, two and three, really. Yeah, but you said I need to see three to get four, right? Because no, they're all very separate. I thought you there don't... was some connection. No, well, I, I said watch the first season if you've not seen it. Right. Yeah, first but season like, hands down is the best season. Yeah, how, how but fourth season is really good. It was great. Mm. It was very entertaining. I'm apparently going to have a lot So that's of your non recommendation? That's my non recommendation <laughs> that you're not going to watch. Kim Wade. I, I know. This. Like, I fought oh. it. I was going along with it. I was like, oh my God, they're tying it into this. And this Pretty is going to be so. Empty. There was just like a lot of character building that didn't need to happen. You know what I'm Disagree. talking about? I love good character building. And then it just didn't go anywhere. I was like, what the point of that was? Whatever. Oh my goodness. Okay. My recommendations. Real quick Helldivers 2, man. If you're not playing it, I think I feel like everyone in the world is playing it right now. But if you're not, go play it. It's very fun. And then the other one is I'm listening to this every morning currently, and that is the Morning Somewhere podcast with Bernie Burns and Ashley Jenkins. Bernie Burns is the guy that started Rooster Teeth. So he created Red versus Blue. Him and a, a bunch of people. It wasn't just him. but And his wife, Ashley, who's like a killer games person in her own right. You know, the Rooster Teeth podcast like really was inspiration for this podcast a little bit. And, and so they, and Bernie's been absent for years. And apparently they moved to Scotland and hang out in Scotland. And it's just real, it's 20 minutes long. And it's just real quick, you know, daily. Here's some stuff for the day. 
and and I just like their vibe a like lot. Game so. news or game? No, just kind of. I mean, kind of game adjacent. Glenn, that's our. <laughs> that's the theme of the day. Yeah, game yeah, adjacent. Besides you and the name dropping. <laughs> but yeah, it's easy. It's like a really easy listen. It's interesting to hear what them living in Scotland is. You get little bits of that, but highly recommend it. That's my cool. morning somewhere podcast. That is but cool. Yeah. How about you, Glenn? All right, TV music. So TV. I finally, I guess finally, I, I've started watching Louder Milk. What is that? What? It's it's two seasons. Googling it. I'm Kim, watching the first season. Why do you have season. such a scrunch face? Ew. Pretty did judgy. you say Louder Milk? Louder Milk. I literally was like, did I hear louder, you? Louder, L-O-U-D-E-R. So it stars the dude who starred in Office Space, the movie. Yep. Oh, nice. Um, Ron Livingston. And he's he leads an A group, an ex-alcoholic, and is like, wholly unlikable, which I love those characters. Oh, like yeah. Just, he's like a horrible person, but not really a horrible person, but kind of a horrible person. Um, well, you'll love True Detective. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's, it's, got, like it's it. got Will Sasso in it. I'm a yeah. huge Will Sasso uh, fan. Will Sasso is great in it, too. Okay, it's, all right. It's really good. Noted. Like you should, milk. Yeah. Yeah, so never. I recommend that. What's it on? Netflix? Do you know? One of the. It says screening. Netflix. Yeah, yeah. I don't I go- which... I'm Googling as it's talking. Cool. Yeah. Thanks. Look at you podcasting over there. <laughs> And then I just discovered an album today that I really liked, a band called Frico, F-R-I-K-O, Where We've Been and Where We Go From Here. And it's, it's I mean, it's indie. Uh, it's, not, it's not EDM. Uh, That's okay. But but it's really good indie. Like it's kind music, of Glenn. Sonic mm-hmm. Youthy, like of Sonic Youth and um, I'm trying to think, like maybe David Bowie kind of, Ooh. like it's got a bit of a glammy-ish That's feel a to it, but it's the Sonic Youthy noisy kind of bit. I like it. I don't know. Came out this week. Like I'm trying to always nice. keep up with. Yeah, let's catch out, new stuff. You know, love it. There you go. Where can people follow you online? And is there anything in particular you'd like to plug? No, I don't like to be followed online in any way whatsoever. <laughs> Same. <laughs> Thanks for calling me out on that, Chris. <laughs> Are you even on Instagram? <laughs> I am, but it's like pictures from do you like follow decades me on ago. I do. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yes, I do. I have to go um, find you then. But I know, like literally, like maybe I haven't posted, I think, in 10 years. And anything I want to plug with just my startup. I'm pretty excited about it. I yeah. mean, it's not really the audience here, but I'm really enjoying getting into the world of AI. Oh, that's something I'm looking forward to is that Sora. Have you seen the demos yeah, of Sora? It's like, crazy. Holy shit. It's, there's, yeah. It's mind boggling. I'm curious to see how long it takes to render that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's so I've been enjoying living in the AI world. So, yeah, I'd plug Lyceum, L Y C E U M. What's the website? Uh, Lyceum Learning dot AI. Right on. Cool. So, that's awesome. my thing. Kim, it was good seeing you guys. You yeah. as well, buddy. I fucking love movie. hanging out with yeah. you. Yeah, with you guys. I appreciate you making fun of Chris with me. And we're making extra plans because there's like movie night for yeah. the yeah. whole. We got that going on. You kind of got... bailed out of movie night, which I appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> There's a bar crawl to the hotel oh, bars. Oh, yeah. I'm down for that. And I thought we had another plan that I got out of this, too. Well, we also have... Anything I'm sorry we can't do Shrek Rave tomorrow. I'm going to be in Lexington. That's why we're not oh, doing it. It's on my calendar. I know. But Shark we're going to do Shrek Rave. Rave. Oh, But we yeah, have Excision coming up. We have Liquid Stranger coming up. Right? Kim, where can people follow you on socials? Please don't follow me on socials. Thank you. <laughs> This is what I have to deal with, man. <laughs> this is what I have to... I'm the only one that lives chronically online. You, where can they follow you on? Yeah, oh, nice. Chris. You can follow me at Bergs Makes Games on Insta. That's where I'm spending most of my time today because Twitter's dead. Yep. I'm also Bergs, just at Bergs on Blue Sky, which is cool, man. There's a good game dev community there that is now open to everybody. So if you're not using Blue Sky, by all means, go to Blue Sky. SoundCloud? Not yet. No. Oh. I mean, I have an old SoundCloud, but Drew and I, we got some oh, stuff. I got some I know. Stuff. Where can people hear, hear your you, Not beats? yet. Not yet. <laughs> and then, of course, most importantly, make sure to follow at Guyly Games on all socials, Insta, Twitter, Facebook, Threads, yeah. and all the links are in our show notes. <laughs> and make sure to wish list Ra Ra Boom on Steam. And we will see you all next week. Have a great week. <laughs> Bye. Bye.